48th running of the last great race was a winter weather festival. 57 teams and a horde of enthusiastic fans gathered in Willow for snow Snowditterrad. Made for great pictures, but a slow go, forcing some teams to linger in Squintna. Monday brought a blue sky, bright sun, and teams riding into rainy pass with a bounce and a song. At Nikolai, the group was greeted by temperatures of 30 below. But Richie Deal was feeling the love and the warmth for arriving first. Another veteran found hard times. Nick the T considered scratching with frostbitten dogs. With his race on the edge, some overnight soul searching and 11th hour medicine turned the fortunes and his sled back around for Nome. Meantime, veteran Matthew Failer got the save of a lifetime. So I thought he was dying in my hands. His beloved lead dog, Cool Cat, was diagnosed with a twisted gut, common but often deadly. Thanks to fast work by volunteer vet Jason Heason, she was rushed from Takatna to McGrath to Anchorage for surgery. And with modern medicine, karma, and an angel on their side, she's now home waiting for Papa Matt and her pals. Jesse Royer certainly knows how to make an entrance, bringing the heat first into McGrath, Ruby, Galena, and Nulato. But the story that's gripped our world finally found the trail. Coronavirus had caught up. No cases reported on the way, but the cloud was now following from town to town. Some checkpoints like Ruby and Takatna remained full service. Others like Nulato, Caltag, and Shaktulik decided the unknown was too much. With the walls up, normal ops were shifted away from town, and Nome's red carpet was put away as the city requested people to stay away. The world was shutting down, and Iditarod was one of the few sporting events still in play. It moved ahead, but social distancing had come to the last great race. As teams continued in their bubbles, the front runners made their bids at the coast. 700 miles in at Unicleet, Steady Jesse Royer plowed ahead. Aaron Burmeister battled the warmer climates. Fixture Wade Mars was in contention with Brent Sass hanging in. But all were pushing and pursuing Thomas Varner. A consistent pace had the Norwegian in front as he put the rearview mirror down and the field away. The man who'd been dreaming about winning this race since he was 11 would plant the Norwegian flag at the Burled Arch and cement his name into history. In a year like no one had ever seen, Thomas Varnard and his team would stand tall as an Iditarod champion.